Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to be walking through activity 3-6 titled Creating and Applying a Quota Template. This is from the MCSE slash MCSA Guide to Microsoft Windows Server 2012 Administration in preparation of exam 70-411. In my edition of the book, this activity begins at the bottom of page 100. Um, so a quick background about the activity. Um, we have created network shares for our users on our network. Um, we have set up DFS namespaces to point to those shares for our users and we've created one share with replication between server 1 and server 2. Specifically in this activity we're going to be looking at the sh uh, namespaced shared, um, specifically the marketing um, shared folder and we're going to be setting up quotas for them. Um, so if we if you're following along and you don't have the file server resource manager installed, um, you'll want to do that first so that you can view these. Um, it's quick and easy to install. You add a role. Under file and storage services, expand that and expand file and iSCSI services. We just want to add the file server resource manager role. Get that installed. Um, I went with the default options um, and the additional tools. It does not require a reboot on the server, so go ahead and get that installed if you're following along and need it. And we will continue on. Um, once you have it open, we're going to be working on quota management. So I will briefly describe these other options before we come back to quotas. The file screening management allows the administrator, you, to control the file types that users are allowed to save to that shared, to a specified shared location. Um, so you can limit users um, and prevent them from saving, for example, MP4s or .AVIs, um, large video files. And so that way you can help reduce the total footprint each user has on your server storage. Um, and that can be done in two ways. You have an active and a passive screening mode. Um, so active, it will in fact block that file from being written to the server, so the users will not be able to save that file type. Um, the alternative is a passive mode, where the server will still accept that data and write it to its storage, but it will spit back out a warning to the user, or you can have it notify an administrator, you know, this user has saved this file type, however you want to do that. So there's quite a bit you can do there. Um, these next two are kind of tied in together a little bit, storage reports management and classification management. Um, the storage reports management let you print out custom reports or view custom reports um, based on the number of files owned by a user, for example, or the total data in use by a user. Um, you can also have it organize files that haven't been accessed in a certain time period. For example, if a user has files that are seven years old, this report can show you that those files are seven years old and haven't been used in six years. Um, so it's very robust, very useful. There's a lot of customization you can do for these reports. I'm not going to go that in depth, so let's just go ahead and move on. Our next option is the classification management, which is similar, but it is slightly different. Um, the classification management actually lets us control specific properties. Um, so we have folder usage, um, folder owner email, and access denied. Let me expand that. Assistance message. Um, so these classifications are useful in kind of reviewing what types of data. Um, is being saved to those network save or the, net the network shares, um, which users are saving the most data there. Um, quite a bit you can do with that as well. Again, not going to be the focus of this video. So, um, the file management tasks you can set up custom tasks. Um, there's so much you can do there that I don't think I could fit it all into a single video. Um, so we're not going to go there in this video for certain. We'll go back to quota management. Um, so you have two options in your quota management. You have your applied quotas, and then you have your quota templates. 
there are a few basic templates created to begin. We're going to go ahead and create a new quota template here. Um, you can base it off of whatever existing template you want. Um, it is optional, as it mentions. Um, let's go ahead and give it a name like marketing quota, and this is going to apply directly to this marketing docs share. And so let's say like a 20 megabyte limit to marketing users. So we'll set our limit at 20 megabytes. Um, we have two options here, a hard quota and a soft quota. The difference is that a hard quota will actually prevent users from saving data that would exceed the 20 megabyte limit specified here. The soft quota will allow them to continue saving, but it's still useful for monitoring, so you can see when somebody's exceeded their limits. Um, in notifications, let's go ahead and take a look. We have several options in here. Um, one thing to note is that if you want to enable any of the email options, you need to configure this server with an SMTP email server so that it can send out these emails appropriately. Um, without an SMTP um, configuration, it can't send emails, and setting this up is kind of pointless. So, um, just for this video, we're going to go ahead and set this to 50%, and so it'll generate a notification when a user reaches or passes 10 megabytes. Um, we can have it send an email to um, administrative users. Um, you can set up multiple users, for example, admin1 at domain.local and then separate them with a semicolon. So then we could do admin2 at domain.local, etc. We do however many users we want there. We could also have it send an email to the user who has exceeded their threshold. Um, the default configuration for these and, and the message um, is actually very useful. Where you have these brackets, it'll automatically fill in the appropriate data. So it'll automatically put the correct user um, their threshold percentage, etc. So that's pretty uh, pretty good by default. Um, we can also have it save a warning to the event log, again in the same format. You can have it run a command or a script. Um, a couple of e examples for this. Um, if a user um, passes that 50%, which in this case is 10 megabytes, um, in a real-life environment, that would probably be much larger. But whenever they reach that point, you can have a script that will go and delete, like, for example, the temporary data to free up a little bit of space there um, and reduce their total data on the, on the server. Or you could create a script that would go and compress their data into an archive. Um, so there's a few things you can do there. And the final option is to generate a report um, you can do it based on one or more of the fields listed here. I'm not going to go too far into those. Um, duplicate files is usually a good one, and files by owner. You can then limit the number of files included in a report. Um, so that way you can see, you know, if I only want to see what somebody's largest 50 files are, then I can set that up with large files. So it'll only show me their 50 largest. You can, have, you can then send those reports the same way you could um, the email message. So to send a report to your admin users or to the user that has exceeded their, or has uh, reached this percentage of their, their limit. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. We can see my warning is at 50%, and it should create an event log message, an event log warning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And we see that it's been created here. Now the quick and easy way to apply it is to right click on it and create a new quota from this template. Um, the quota path is going to be that shared drive or that shared folder um, wherever that network location is. You want to browse to it and select it here. Um, if you want this to apply only to this top level then you do the quota on that path. Um, if you want it to apply to subfolders, then you select your second option here. I'm going to leave it as the first. Um, 
we are driving properties from a template. It has it pre-selected because of the way we right-clicked it. And, um, so we can review the configuration down here and then go ahead and tell it to create. Look back up in quotas and we see it created here. Alright, so now to verify it, we're going to go ahead and open up our file explorer. Go into marketing docs and depending on how your environment is set up and how your network is set up, you'll likely create a, a separate folder for each department or for each user, um, something to keep this organized. You don't want all of the users dumping all of their data into the exact same folder or the exact same directory because then they have to sort through other people's stuff to find theirs. Um, it can make, make a pretty big mess. So let's assume that we're going to organize it by users. So I'm going to create an admin folder. And now I want to start dumping some data in here. So I'm going to go and just find you know, something around 10 megabytes. A little bit bigger than 10 megabytes would be good. I just saw one for 12. Somewhere up here. There it is. So I'm going to grab a copy of that. So just over 12 megabytes. I'm going to go ahead and come back to my admin folder inside the share. So for my C drive, this is my actual shared folder. Let's go ahead and verify that. So it is being shared. I've created my admin directory here. And I'm going to create a copy of that right there. All right. And I'm going to refresh my event viewer. We'll open that up and take a look in just a moment. I'm going to create another copy of it and rename this one. Let's go there. And paste that copy. And there we go. So I already have 12 megabytes in that shared location. I'm trying to add another 12 megabytes. Um, so that would put me over my 20 megabyte limit. And so there's the hard quota saying that there's not enough space to put that file in there. Um, so it doesn't matter how many times I tell it to try again, it'll keep giving me the same notification. So that's one way of verifying that it is working appropriately. Keep in mind if you're Quota limits are higher, 10, 20, 50 gigs, depending on how much storage you have total. Um, it may be a little bit harder to test. You might just have to wait until a user approaches that limit. Um, so I did mention that we were going to look back at the event viewer because we had set it to um, re record a, a warning here if a user passed their 50% mark, which we just did. So we want to expand our Windows logs and select Application. And right here at the very top, Event ID 12325, um, you may see 12324 for the Event ID. Um, either one, the source should be the same either way. SRM SVC, just like that. And we can see that the user, Domain User Administrator, passed the 50% quota threshold on the marketing doc share on the server the limit 200 or 20 megabytes and I'm currently using 12.02 .02, which is 60 percent of my limit so that's how you can verify that the event viewer is logging if you configure it that way otherwise if you set it up to send out email messages then this is the message you would be receiving or your user would be receiving Alright, so the next thing we want to verify, we'll go ahead and look back into our file resource manager. And if we refresh this, if it'll let us refresh this, we might have to reopen it. So let's do that. And we should be able to look back into this quota and see that it's at 60%. And so that shows us that somebody's put enough data in there to reach 60%. So somebody's already filling up that quota. 
That's, that's just another way to confirm it. Um, I think that wraps everything up for this activity and therefore this video. Um, as always, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them for me below. And I will try to reply in a timely fashion. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in my next video.